In this video, we're going to do two problems from the textbook having to do with the relationships between Fibonacci numbers. You'll want to pay special attention to these because you will see problems similar to this in your next class and on your first exam. This is problem 7 in section 2.2. The first thing you do on any problem that you're confronted with is to read it carefully first and make sure that you understand every word in the statement of the problem. Discovering Fibonacci relationships. By experimenting with numerous examples in search of a pattern, determine a simple formula for f sub n squared plus f sub n plus 1 squared. That is a formula for the sum of the squares of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Now, before you go on in the problem, you want to make sure that you see when it says that is a formula for the sum of the squares of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, you want to make sure that you understand why this sentence means this expression here. Notice if two, <coughs> if Fibonacci numbers are consecutive, that means they come right after each other. For example, 5 and 8 are consecutive Fibonacci numbers, and notice they are f, the fifth Fibonacci, the sixth Fibonacci. So see here, n, f sub n, and f sub n plus 1 is the way that you can denote two consecutive Fibonacci's anywhere in the sequence. So f sub n and f sub n plus 1 are consecutive. So it says find a formula for the sum, the sum of the squares, you notice that these Fibonacci numbers are squared, of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So now we know what we're doing, and let's, let's experiment with numerous examples. By numerous, we usually mean uh, about five is plenty. So now that we're done with all the words, we don't need to look back at those. We just have our expression here, f sub n squared plus f sub n plus 1 squared. And we want to use examples to... <clears throat> to illustrate this and see if we can find a pattern. So let's first of all let n be 1. If n is 1, then f sub 1, the first Fibonacci, is f1 squared plus the next Fibonacci is f2 squared. If n is equal to 1, this is f1 and this is 1 plus 1. I advise you not to write out 1 plus 1. I see students do that all the time, substituting in 1 very carefully here. But just add them in your head. It saves you from making a mistake uh, later. All right, well, f1 is 1, so we have to square that. And f2 is also 1, so 1 squared plus 1 squared is 1 plus 1, or 2. So if n is 1, our result is 2. Now let's do n equals 2. If n is 2, substituting n in right here for the subscript, substituting it in, we would have f2 squared plus f2 plus 1 is 3, 3 squared. f sub 2 squared plus f3 squared. Keep in mind those that these are subscripts. You have to keep them low and keep them small font. Well, f2 is the second Fibonacci, and that's 1, 1 squared, plus the third Fibonacci is 2, and that must be also squared. So we have 1 plus 4, or 5. Let's try n equals 3. <clears throat> when n is equal to 3, this expression becomes f3 squared plus f4 squared. And f3 is the third Fibonacci, which is 2. 2 squared plus the fourth Fibonacci is 3. 
3 squared, so we have 4 plus 9, or 13. If n is equal to 4, I think we should do 5 examples. If n is 4, I have the expression is f4 squared plus f5 squared, n, n plus 1, in the subscript. So the fourth Fibonacci is 3. We'll square 3 and add it to the fifth Fibonacci, which is 5. Squaring that, we get 25 plus 9 is 34. And now let's do n equals 5. When n is 5, this expression becomes f5 squared plus f6 squared. And the fifth Fibonacci is 5, so that is 5 squared plus the sixth Fibonacci is 8, 8 squared. We have 64 plus uh, 29 is 89. No, 25 plus 64 is 89. Okay, so that's five examples, and you probably see a pattern right now. 2, 5, 13, 34, 89. Well, those are Fibonacci numbers. We see them up here. We're getting 2, 5, 13, 34, 89. So some students will say, well, I see every other Fibonacci number. That's, uh, that is definitely something that you do see. It's worth saying if you can't come to a conclusion that we asked for in this problem, a general formula. So let's, uh, let's ask ourselves, well, we see we have Fibonacci's. This is written in terms of our general notation. So let's write which Fibonacci's the, uh, these are. Two is the third Fibonacci. And 5 is the fifth one, f sub 5, 13 is the seventh Fibonacci, 34, just count over and you'll see it is the ninth Fibonacci, and 89 is the eleventh Fibonacci. So you see, well, every other Fibonacci, <coughs> excuse me, odd, odd, subs odd subscripts, that's another thing you notice but we don't see a general formula yet. So let's try to take our value of n. Here n is 1, and we got f3. When n was 2, we got f5. When n was 3, we got f7. When n was 4, we got f9. And when n was 5, we got f11. Well, now in here we can look for <clears throat> a pattern. We'd like to write which Fibonacci we got in terms of our n. Now, what I notice, but I have a lot more experience than, than students do, but I notice that 3 is twice 1 plus 1, and 5 is 2 times 2 plus 1, and 7 is 2 times 3 plus 1. 9 is 2 times 4 plus 1. 11 is 2 times 5 plus 1. I'm looking for a way to write the subscripts of the Fibonacci that we got in our answer, relate it back to the value of n. So I see that what we get here is a Fibonacci. Which one is it? Well, it's f sub 2n plus 1. Now, you're not used to looking for patterns like that, so let me show you, if you don't see that, how many times students solve this problem, and it's equally as good. They see f3, and they notice that the two Fibonacci's were f1 squared, f2 squared, and they added 1 and 2 to get 3. Here they got f5 and they noticed that the subscripts in the two original Fibonacci's added to 5. 7, well, the subscripts added to 7. 9, 4 plus 5. 11, 5 plus 6. So 
They write, well, they know they get a Fibonacci from f sub n squared plus f sub n plus 1 squared. They see that they got a Fibonacci, and it was the subscript was the sum of the subscripts above. So it would be n plus n plus 1. Well, n plus n plus 1 is 2n plus 1. So this is, this is exactly the same answer that I got here, and this is just a very nice way of writing it too. So either one is, would be full credit. This problem is not one of finding patterns, but it is something interesting uh, about the natural numbers and their relationship to the Fibonacci numbers. Remember in high school you studied prime numbers and you learned that any number, any natural number like 27, could be factored as a product of prime numbers. In that case, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Or 21 is equal to 3 times 7. That was called prime factoring. And you did a lot of it because it was very helpful for algebra. This little theorem that we note about Fibonacci numbers is not as helpful, but it's interesting that every natural number can be written as a sum of distinct non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Now pay attention to the word non-consecutive. You have to know what every word means in order to do a problem. Non-consecutive means that these numbers are not right next to each other in the sequence. So here's how you do it. You do it the same way in every, every, uh, for each, for any number. 2000, we look up here and we find the biggest Fibonacci that is still less than 2000, 1597. And then I will subtract it from 2000 and get 403. So uh, I look, is 403 a Fibonacci? If it were, we'd be done, but it's not. So I need to look up to my list of Fibonaccis again, and I want to find the biggest Fibonacci that is less than 403, which is 377. So now I will rewrite this sum as 1597 plus 377, and I subtract that from 400, uh, 403, and I get 26. So now I write the sum this way. Notice we now have two Fibonaccis in our sum, but 26 is not a Fibonacci, so we need to go further. So I rewrite 1597 plus 377, and now 26, I take out the biggest Fibonacci I can, 21. And 26 then is 21 plus 5. And now 5 is a Fibonacci. As soon as I get that, I'm done. I'm not going to rewrite 5 as... 2 plus 3, because 2 plus 3 would be consecutive. I want this as a sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So when you get to a Fibonacci, you stop. And this is our answer. 2,000 is equal to this sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers. And you can have those numbers circled right here, and you see none of them are next to each other.